Okay, here we're gonna look at another example of a triple integral. So let's just recall that a triple integral can be written as an iterated double and single integral. So this is just one of the setups, which is actually slightly different than what we'll see in our example, but let's just review it. So let's say E is the region above the XY plane where the X and Y values are bound by this region D in the XY plane. And then Z is bound by a lower function and an upper function. Then we can decompose this triple integral over E as a double integral over D. And then inside of that is a single integral with respect to Z from the lower function to the upper function. So I want to highlight in this video that not all of the time will your two-dimensional region be in the XY plane. Sometimes it might be in the XZ or YZ plane, which means your inner integral may not always be with respect to Z. It may be with respect to X or Y, and we'll see that inside this example. So here's what we want to do. We want this triple integral over our region E of the square root of X squared plus Z squared DV, and here E is going to be the region bound by these two surfaces. So we have the surface y equals x squared plus z squared and then the other surface y equals 4 which is just a plane. So let's get an idea for what this is. So we can draw a picture. So we here we have the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. And if you think about this, here's how I like to think about this surface. Just cover up one variable at a time and see what curve it is. So if we cover up the z variable, then that's y equals x squared, which is a parabola. Next, if we cover up the x variable, we get y equals z squared, which is also a parabola. And then finally, if we set y equal to some constant, we get x squared plus z squared equals a constant, which is a circle. So what that tells me is that this thing opens like a parabola in two directions, and the shape with which it opens is circular. Okay, so that allows me to draw this picture. So I'll have this parabola coming out like this, and this is uh, known as a paraboloid. And then it's going to stop at y equals 4. So let's go ahead and put y equals 4 there. And where it stops, it's going to open in some sort of circle. Great. So uh, our picture is like that. So this is like some sort of bowl, which is on its side. Okay, good. Now, in order to get an idea of what our region and the plane should be, we need to look at a shadow of this region. But we should see, do we need to look at a shadow in the XY plane, the XZ plane, or the YZ plane? And I think it's pretty clear here that we want the XZ plane. And that's because X and Z are most definitely... Um, independent variables with respect to y in this case. y is really playing the role of a dependent variable. Okay, so that means we can think about the sun shining over here, and that's going to push this thing back to something in the xz plane, and what we'll get in the xz plane is a circle of radius 4. So how do we know that that's a circle of radius 4? Because this intersection right here is when y equals 4 and y equals x squared plus z squared. So that means we get x squared plus z squared equals 4. So that's our region back here. It's a circle of radius 4. Okay, great. So let's see. That means that we can rewrite this region in the following way. We can say E is equal to... Um, <coughs> x, y, z, and in this case, x and z are in this region D, and then um, y goes between x squared plus z squared and 4, so we can write it as that type of region. Okay, good. So I'm going to like go ahead and clean up the board, and then we'll focus more on this region. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm going to clean up the board, and then we will uh, look at evaluating this uh, triple integral. Okay, so to summarize what we saw on the last board, we have E is a 
made up of X, Y, and Z. X and Z come from a region D in the X, Z plane. And then Y is bound between X squared plus Z squared and four. And just to recall, that region in the X, Z plane is this disk, which is bound on the outside by X squared plus Z squared. Remember, that's where our paraboloid intersected with our plane. And that was the largest point of that paraboloid. And so that means we can write D in the following way. It's all ordered pairs x, z, where x squared plus z squared is less than or equal to 4. Okay, and now we can write this triple integral in the following way. So it'll be the double integral over this disk d of the single integral from x squared plus z squared all the way up to 4 of our function, which is x squared plus z squared under a square root, and now we're doing dy dA. We'll calculate that double integral afterwards. Now notice there's no y's in here, so that means the antiderivative is pretty easy. So that's going to give us the double integral d of y times the square root of x squared plus z squared. Um, and now we're going to evaluate that from y equals x squared plus z squared all the way up to 4 dA. Okay, so we've got something like that going on. So notice that's going to give us the double integral over this region d of 4 times the square root of x squared plus z squared minus x squared plus z squared times the square root of x squared plus z squared. But notice that's going to be x squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. And now we have dA outside of all of that. Okay, great. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring that to the top and then we're ready to get calculating this double integral. Okay, so let's just recall we had this triple integral was written in terms of this double integral after um, taking the innermost uh, single integral out of the equation. And notice our double integral is over this disk, which is in the x, z plane. And whenever you're integrating over something circular, you should probably use polar coordinates, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to use polar coordinates where x is going to be r cosine theta, and y, sorry, not y in this case, z is going to be r sine theta. Okay, good. But notice that this region D in the x, z plane is easily expressed with polar coordinates in the following way. So that means theta is going to run between 0 and 2 pi, and then r is going to run between 0 and 2, because this is a circle of radius 2. It's x squared plus y squared equals 4. Now we need a couple of other equations. Notice that we have x squared plus z squared is going to be r squared cos squared plus r squared sine squared, so that's going to be r squared, which is nice. And another thing that we notice is dA in this case is going to be r dr d theta. And that's just from doing um, a change of variables into polar coordinates, which we did on a previous video for a double integral. Now I should say, um, Whenever you leave a single part of a triple integral in a rectangular coordinate and you change the other two to polar coordinates, that's technically, technically called cylindrical coordinates. But as you can see, we don't really need cylindrical coordinates. We can really just do the first step, which is in rectangular coordinates, and then finish it off with polar coordinates and get the same result. Okay, good. So now notice this is going to give us the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2, so that's my theta integral on the outside and my r integral on the inside. Now I have that is 4 times r, because we have the square root of r squared, minus uh, r cubed, because that is uh, r squared to the 3 halves, so that's going to be r cubed, then r dr d theta. Okay? So, notice that is going to give us the following. We can write that as the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta, that integral by itself, because notice this is only a function of r, and then times the integral from 0 to 2 of 4r squared minus r to the fourth dr. Okay? 
So this integral is easy. That's just two pi. And then we've got a little bit of work to do here. Notice that's going to be four thirds r cubed minus r to the fifth over five. We need to evaluate that from zero to two. Okay, so let's see what we get for that. So two plugged into here, we get eight. So we're going to get uh, two pi. So eight times four is 32 over three. So 32 over three minus uh, two to the fifth is equal to 32. So minus 32 over five. And then I'll just leave it like that because that's just simple arithmetic. And this will be the end of the video.